everybody. Welcome to story time with today. It's me, it's a day. So we're in a different scene. We're currently at Haddington and I wanted to do story time with you guys. Yay! So this month we have Black History Month. So I have two books for Black History Month that we're gonna be doing. And the first one is Fancy Party Gowns. It's a story about a fashion designer named Ann Cole Lau. And the story has been done by Deborah Boothmall. I hope I didn't butcher that. If I did, I'm very sorry and I apologize. And then we also have an illustrated, it illustrated by Laura Friedman. Laura, this is, this is wonderful. I love your illustrations. I really do. So let's get into it. I fell in love with these fashion illustrations. I just, oh, I love it. So Ann Cole is a fashion designer and basically this is her story. She's an African-American uh, woman that I wanted to talk about for the Black History Month. So I thought she'd be a good candidate. So. All right, let's get into it. Oh my goodness, I'm excited, yay. So when she was old enough to thread a needle, Ann Cole Lowell's mama and grandmama taught her how to sew. Wisps of cloth would fall from their work tables like confetti and Anne would scoop them up and turn them into flowers as bright as roses in the garden. Anne's family came from Alabama. Her great grandmother had been a slave, so her family knew about working just as hard to get by. Look at Anne, being pretty. I wanted you guys to see. Anne also knew that doing what you love could set your spirit soaring. So that's what she did. Working near her mama in the family shop, making glorious dresses for women who went to fancy parties. Look at that old sewing machine. Look at that cloth. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> But when Anne was 16, death stole her mama away. There was no one to care for her anymore and no one to make the dresses. I'm so sorry for Anne. The Alabama governor's wife was waiting for her gowns. Anne thought about what she could do, not what she could change. So she sat down and sewed the dresses herself. Then she stood up and ran the business. In 1916, Anne got a job sewing dresses for a woman in Florida. A year later, the woman sent her to design school in New York. Anne was a good student and a fast learner. Look at her going to New York City. Isn't it great? But it was 1917, and Anne had to study in a separate classroom all alone because she was African American and her life wasn't fair. That wasn't fair at all but she did it. Look at it, oh, look at these beautiful illustrations, I love it. That didn't stop Anne. She kept on making extravagant gowns and year after year, more and more women wanted to wear them. Elegant dresses, party gowns, no two alike. I love this, I love this expression of joy. I feel so happy when I'm making clothes that I could jump up and down with joy, she said. Finally, Anne saved enough money to open a saloon of her own in Manhattan. She had big bills to pay and sometimes not enough, to, enough money to pay them. That didn't stop her. When Anne saw obstacles, she thought about what she could do, not what she couldn't change. One day, Anne got a special order. Look at those counts. A lady in Washington, D.C. was marrying a senator. Seven years later, this man, John F. Kennedy, will become president of the United States. Anne brought 50 yards of the finest ivory silk, taffia, and the trimmings to go with it. 
For months, she cut and sewed the gown, had a wide buffinette and skirt with pleated bands and tiny wax flowers, and also made all the dresses for the, for the wedding party. That's gorgeous. Love it. Then, just 10 days before the wedding, Anne opened the door to her workroom. No! She shouted. She cried. A pipe had burst. Water gushed everywhere, flowing, flooding everything. 10 of the 16 gowns were destroyed. Anne thought about what she could do, not what she couldn't change. Look at that. These beautiful gowns. No! Look at that. Teamwork makes the dream work. I love this. She bought more fabric and trim and hired others to help. She lost money instead of earning it. In just eight days and eight nights, Anne had her team remade all the dresses. I love that. But when Anne bought the gowns to the mansion in Newport, Rhode Island, where the wedding reception would take place, the butler who opened the door told her she'd have to use the back entrance that was meant for workers. Anne said that if she's had to enter through the back door, the bride and the bridesmaid wouldn't be wearing the dresses for the wedding. She entered through the front door. Good for you, Anne. Oh, look at that beautiful gown. I love it. The day of the wedding, all the world saw the future First Lady of the United States, Jacqueline Bouvier, Bouvier Kennedy, in her magnificent gown and her bridesmaid dressed in plush pink silk frele. Fale, I think. Fale, yeah. Hardly anyone knew something more important. The name of the woman who had created all of these, all of those gowns, despite the odds. Why? Because Anne Colau was African American and life wasn't fair. That didn't stop Anne. Famous woman wore her gowns at big galas and on television. I like to hear about it, said Anne. The oohs and ahs as they come in to the ballroom. Look at those. Oh, so beautiful. Anne didn't make fine clothes to give Richard famous. She made them, she said. She made them, she said, to prove that a Negro can become a major dress designer. I love that. I love the sewing machine. I love the decorating, the decorations. Almost looks like Art Nouveau, but I love the dresses. I love the dresses as well, the fabrics. Sure, slowly, Anne got the recognition she deserved. In 1961, she was named official couturière to, the, to honor her for the 33 Cinderella gown she designed for a fancy ball in Omaha, Nebraska. After so long, Anne stood up before fashion's biggest names, held high, and they applauded her. Look at her. She stood high before the other fashion designers with her stuff. Oh, I love this. So Anna actually have some other books here. And Colau. Okay, okay. So they have some more books here. Oh, we have an author's note. Remember what I said about author's note in the last in the last story time? If you haven't read it, go read it. It's good, or go see it. It's good. Trust me. Anne Colau was born in 1898, was the first African-American woman to become a designer of couture clothing. Between the 1920s and the 1960s, her one-of-a-kind designs were worn by various society women such as the DuPonts, the Lodges, the Post, and the Arch Closes. Anne is now best known for her ivory silk taffy gown that she designed for Jacqueline Bouvier's wedding to John F. Kennedy on September 12, 1953 at St. Mary's Church in Newport, in Newport, Rhode Island. She is also known for designing the gown that Olivia de Halavan, Halavan Land wore to the, 19, to the 1947 Academy Awards where she won the Best Actress Award for her role to each its own. In three years later, Anne continued to design dresses for prominent women, 
She struggled financially, though, and in 1960 was forced to close her saloon in, in New York City. Anne continued her work until her retirement in 1972. She spent the last five years of her life living in Queens, New York. While researchers of Anne's life will find inconsistencies in her biography, what is never disputed is for the extent of her talent. Anne Colo, Anne Colo died February 25th, 1981 at the age of 82. And that's it. My lovelies, how did you like it? I enjoyed it myself. I wanted to tell you that this was my pick for African, African American Month, Black History Month. Sorry, I'm sorry. And I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed this book and I hope you enjoyed it as well. I wanted to say that we here at the Free Library are open and I mean, are ready. Um, you know, we're right here for you. So you have a good day.